Uh, hello and welcome to my guide and the way that I personally get smithing up to 100. Um, I think it's a pretty fast way, maybe. So the first thing you want to do is go to your map <coughs> and you want to go to the guardian stones and within the three guardian stones you want to select the warrior stone the warrior stone gives you 20 percent faster learning speed so to speak and combat skills and smithing is a combat skill so that would definitely benefit you um the next thing is that this this is this guide is assuming that you're not a race that has a bonus in smithing or anything like that. I mean, you can certainly pick a race that has a bonus in smithing because if you do, then you'll just have to make less items. But um totally up to you. So, I'm here at Colsiger Mine. Don't know how to pronounce that, but you know, <laughs> there's a chicken here with me, and um, basically up there is the mine. Now the mine is a good mine for uh, for gold, which is going to be a resource that we're using. Though it's full of forsworn, so um, I mean you can get gold by buying it from a vendor or just finding a mine like that one that has it but that one is full of forsworn that you know also has a side quest where you have to kill all those forsworn um you have to kill them anyways to be able to mine anything because you're always in combat if you don't anyway we're going to go from that little house there and go down this bridge just going to go a little ways Say right about here is good. And you're going to see this little boat here that's been crashed. Now below the water there's two barrels, a chest, a goat that's... Okay. And there's a lockbox, a satchel, and some mead. But the most important thing is that in the middle of this there are a bunch of gems, a bunch of rare gems, uh, but the gem that we're most focused on is the Flawless Diamond. Now, I've already picked these up, so they're not there, but these do respawn. I, I don't know how long it takes, though. Um, I, I think it takes a few weeks uh, for them to respawn, but I'm not sure, but they do respawn. So, you want to pick up the Flawless Diamond. You can pick up the others if you want. I mean, it's not a part of this. <clears throat> and we're going to go to Whiterun. Now, you need a follower because we're going to do a glitch where you duplicate items. Now, you can use any follower that you want. I don't think it makes too big of a difference, but you may get a slightly different result when, with one follower than the other. Um, I, I don't know. So, from the entrance, we're going to go left past this guard into this little cubby area, and you're going to tell your follower to wait, and... You're going to take your diamonds, your flawless diamond. Now, you can either choose to duplicate gold ore or gold ingots. Personally, I prefer ingots because it just saves you the hassle of having to smelt all of them. And plus, you need two to smelt to make one. So, you also have to make sure that you get enough of that. And it's just, I don't know. Personally, I prefer... I prefer duplicating ingots rather than ore but you're going to drop ore drop your diamonds 
and you're going to tell your follower that you need them to do something. And you're going to have them pick up those two items. So you're going to go back and they're going to remain there. And then you're going to leave Whiterun. Now, this glitch can vary a little bit. I've, for example, if I drop two items, I expect to get four back, but I'll only get three back. You know, it's just one of those things that can be slightly inconsistent. So just keep that in mind and keep duplicating. <laughs> So you're going to leave White Run and then immediately go back in. And yes, I know I'm playing Skyrim VR and I know not many people like this version or record in this version, but I don't know. <clears throat> So we're going to go back and you can see that our items are on the ground now and we can pick them back up but there's also a copy of those items in your followers inventory. So you go down and say I need to trade some things with you, go to miscellaneous and you can take back the gold and the uh, diamond. And now we have duplication. Now for that, I only got one. And I noticed that if you're trying to duplicate one of an item, sometimes it may take one or two tries before it actually duplicates. Um, so that's a little bit frustrating, but you can just keep trying again. Um, obviously, the more items you drop, the more you're going to get in return. So, for example, if I tell her to pick up these, and then I leave White Run, enter White Run, I would expect four diamonds and four gold ore, uh, two on the ground, two in her inventory. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I just basically want to keep doing that. Um, and when you're ready to smith, I would recommend saving. But we're going to go to the forge. And if you have the ingots, you can just, if you're duplicating ingots, you can skip the smelter step. But we're going to go to the forge, go down to jewelry. And the way that smithing experience works is that the higher the item's value, the more experience you're going to get. So making something like an iron dagger isn't going to get you a lot of experience because it just isn't worth that much it has a value of 10. however with the flawless diamonds we or the yeah the flawless diamond we can make a gold diamond necklace which is worth 1200 which is the most expensive item you can make out of you know having a base level of smithing with no perks or anything like that and so when you're ready can just craft this um, I think it takes maybe 130 I'm not too sure on that but I it definitely takes a hundred something to make um, that's basically it oh yeah you you always want to remember to keep one diamond to yourself so at least one diamond to yourself so if I'm crafting a bunch of these right I want to keep at least one of these because you need an item in order to duplicate it. And so that's why I always recommend save before smithing in case you do get a little carried away and you smith that flawless diamond. That's not to say you can't get it back, but it's going to take a long time before you can get that back. And um, once you're done smithing, you can just go back into here and just drop your items, tell them to pick it up, leave white run, enter white run, and just keep doing that process over and over again. Um, I guess an added benefit to this is that you can use those necklaces for enchantments, or you can sell those necklaces for, 
I would assume a sizable amount of gold. Um, I, I don't know. I guess that's dependent on your speech skill level. But, um... Let's see. As you can see, I've duplicated some of these. Um... Yeah, see, I have 136 gold diamond necklaces. So, that's generally about how much it takes. I can't remember if I sold any of them in the process or anything like that. But that's, I would say, roughly amount the, roughly around the amount it would take to get your smithing to 15 to 100. Of course, if you have well-rested bonus or lover's comfort, that can speed things up a little bit um you're obviously going to have to craft less if you're a race that has a bonus in smithing um if you want to make the process go a little faster you can use those necklaces and you can sell them by and um you can sell them to any vendor and you want to go up to yarvis yar yar something but you basically want to go up to the F Sky Forge, and um, usually he's here, but he's not. But you can complete like the first quest of the Companion's quest line, and you can get Yearling Greymane to teach you smithing. It's going to cost gold in order to teach five levels of smithing. And once you pay for those five levels of smithing, you need to level up yourself in order to pay for five more levels. And um, obviously it's going to cost more gold each time. It's going to incrementally get higher and higher. Uh, I don't think that's a word, but okay. Um, there's also these books like the Armor's Challenge, which... Um, you know, you can read these and it grants one level of free smithing, essentially. It's also skill books for other skills, but we're focused on smithing. So you just click it like that and then you can just exit. You don't even have to read through the whole thing. And that increases your uh, skill by one automatically. So I think there's like five or six books with multiple locations where you can find them um so i'll i'll leave at least one location for each book and uh in the description i'm not going to count the ogam infitum or whatever it's called the book you get from the black book quest which grants a bunch of skill points to a certain set of skills um you can do that if you want but, I mean, I personally, since I'm trying to build a sort of mage-like character, I'm not going to use the black book for that. Um, I'm probably going to use it towards the mage skill set. Uh, but you can use it... You can use it for the warrior skill set. It basically just grants a bunch of skill points to... Um, a skill set so if you do choose warrior not only does it increase your smithing but also increases every other warrior skill uh, such as one-handed and light armor and all that stuff which is pretty useful um, but it's just up to you and um, it's pretty much it now there is one more thing I want to show and I have to wait until daytime. Basically, there's if you're going to sell these necklaces, there's a small glitch you can do which makes the process go a little faster. This might be too early. Nope. All right. So you can go in to the vendor's place. Let me know if you see 
and see what we have for sale. Scroll down, and as you can see, he has 750 gold. If I sell him this, he has 374. Now, if he runs out of gold, there's a small glitch you can do where um, first you save the game. It doesn't have to be a quick save, but it's just faster. So you're going to save the game. You're going to hurt the vendor. And then you're going to load that save. As you can see, his gold is back to its full amount. Back to his full amount, I should say. He's a human. I probably shouldn't call him it. But anyway, um, as you can see, his gold is back to full amount. And this also restocks his inventory. So if there's something you're looking for that wasn't quite in his inventory, um, you can do that glitch and... Their inventory will restock, and maybe you'll find what you're looking for. Uh, it just depends on the shopkeeper. I mean, he's probably not going to carry any spells if he's not a mage. It's basically just a little glitch you can do to save him time if you're selling those necklaces or any or just anything in general. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, you just keep duplicating, keep making gold diamond necklaces. Remember to always keep at least one necklace, so that way you can duplicate it. Um, and that's pretty much it. So uh, I hope this helps. Um, I, I don't think there's any enchantments or anything like that that can help with skill points but um that's pretty much it hope you enjoyed and uh i hope this helps